Hey guys, how you doing? This is, uh, this is, I wanted to go over with you guys from one of the, from the Candies tournament. This is, I think it was, uh, three games before the end, um, and I'm not exactly sure which round it was, but this one was Mama Jara, our, uh, Shaq versus, um, Ding Lauren. So, Shaq is uh, white and Ding is uh, black. And so what, what we have to do um, is we're going to go over it in uh, Ding 1. And it was, it was really, really interesting how, how Ding uh, Lauren 1 is. He, he was able to actually queen, I believe, two two queens and it was a really really nice game really 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 nice and so I wanted to uh, show it to you guys and uh, have you guys enjoy it right alongside with me all right let's have some juice okay come on come on there we go so uh, Shaq went d4 uh, Ding went uh, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, knight d5, and let, let's see, okay, we have the queen's gambit uh, declined, uh, three knights variation. So this is the queen's gambit declined. The accepted, uh, I think if he took here, it'd be accepted. Oh, it's the, oh, it's the okay, it's still the queen's gambit declined. I think if, I think if he would have not played his knight, I think if he would have played, I'm not sure, how is the queen's gambit, I have to check real quick, let's see, because I want to make sure I'm doing this exactly right. No, that's the French. Eh, well, we'll I'll have to we'll have to do a line on the um, Queen's Gambit declined because that's really popular of a, a line for Black. Okay, so basically, let's get to somewhat. If you notice now, Shaq actually has the ability of of center control two pawns versus one to from Dings. So what what uh, Ding's plan is is to control the center with pieces. So first he checks with his bishop, and he and then Shaq uh, blocks with his bishop. He takes takes, then castles. So now we have a scenario. One second, let me get a sip. We have a scenario in this where uh, one second. Okay, good. Uh, nothing's worse than having something on your glasses, right? Right where you're seeing. So now it's better. I can I can see. There's nothing irritating me. Okay, what we look at here, Ding has a castle king, so Shaq doesn't. So Ding's gonna start probably getting ready to develop and get a push. So Shaq's gonna play knight uh, bishop c4 now. Now, now all the Shaq's pieces are developed except for castling. So at this moment, Ding is actually undeveloped, but he has a castle king. So you're trading safety for um, undevelopment at the moment. And we're getting close to an end game almost. Pieces are starting to fly off the board. Knight d7 was played by Ding, and Shaq castled after after Shaq castled. Uh, Ding played b6. <clears throat> he wants to fianchetto along this uh, long uh, a8 to h1 diagonal, which is actually it controls these squares in the center. So he's gonna, um, Ding's going to try to control. Sorry about that. Ding's going to try to control uh, the center with pieces. Not really yet with pawns because he really can't p 
push at this moment because uh, Shaq has full control of the center. He's got humongously control. This knight guards here, bishop guards here, pawns guard there. So we'll show you what, what he actually controls. These are the these are this is all the squares that he controls in front of uh, Ding's forces right here. So he can't plant the knight here or here. So Ding's gonna have to control uh, in a basically a modern type of <clears throat> excuse me. It's a more of a modern idea of controlling the center with pieces rather than pawns. Oh, good. Hey, how you doing, Fox? We're going over um, uh, Shaq versus Ding Lauren, the candidates. Um, one, I think it's the third from the last day, and this is the one where Ding won as black. And we're we're uh, talking how uh, Shaq actually controlled the center with pawns, and Ding is gonna start controlling the center with pieces. So. Ding's doing more of a hyper modern. Yeah, exactly, and and that's why uh, Ding played uh, b6 was to control uh, the center. Uh, with his, he's he has a really good bishop at that point, so, so that's what we have to keep in mind. And then there we go. He's got he's he's got his control. And so he's attacking the bishop. So Ding's now um, following Jeremy Silman's um, imbalance principle of if you see an open file, why not just take it? Oh, right. That's exactly, that's the problem. But remember that at this moment, uh, there's really not enough to cramp um, black. Yes, he can get cramped potentially with... Um, e5 but then that that actually frees up ding's bishop so i there's really not a way that ding's going to get cramped yet so he actually is pretty this is a pretty equal position and the computer judged it equally too so it's it's uh we're uh, we both judged it we all judged it correctly that this is equal because ding controls this whole uh, h1 to uh, a8 diagonal so if Shaq ever tries to push he Ding gets this beautiful diagonal and it's like don't move basically you better watch your knight uh, Shaq otherwise I'm gonna take it and double your uh, pawns and you're gonna have a very weak uh, G g2 square right in front of your king and I'm gonna be able to later on bring a queen in bring a knight in and cause a lot of uh, ha you know hassle on uh, g2 so that's why uh, he had to retreat he also is bishops under attack too so that's another mention uh, rook e8 h6 h3 sorry <laughs> I'm used to looking at it from uh, black white side I'm doing it from black so uh, uh, that that got me a little uh, you know, I thought like h6, no, it's h3. So, and uh, Ding then brought his knight in. So he's trying to, like what you're saying, Fox, uncramp his position so that um, he's okay. And Shaq controls a lot of the central files. It's, it's they're not open, but he's he's he has his forces ready for when they do open. He's got his cannons, his artillery units ready to uh, send a volley of uh, uh, metal things at them to take out their foot units when 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 the clearance is ready. Yeah, exactly on the night. So this is under attack. So now he's got to, uh, the queen has to guard. So we have a knight, knight, and bishop. 
potentially you could do this, but I don't, I don't know if I if I like trading. Um, you know, two pieces in a pawn for for this position. I don't know. Let me see how, if it's. I think White's better in this. Yeah, White White's actually much better in this scenario. He could trade off and and you know win a pawn, but. Yeah. At this point, this uh, right, you're 100 percent right of that. If he played here, that's a mistake. Cause then, if he takes, then you can take back, and now you're sniping here and you're sniping there. This bishop is a super power monster. So the so Ding went for an attack on the queen. And now he's got a square for his king to flee to as well. Also, potentially, if Ding had to, let's say uh, Shaq played um, g4, he uh, Ding, uh, Ding could go f5, h7, uh, g5, and then implant his knight on uh, g5. And if the knight took, then he opens up, or, or the queen could take. So this is a really nice square to have open for the king and the knight for later um, rerouting of the knight if he wants to get it to uh, uh, g5. Uh, so just always a look if you have a, like a really badly placed knight. Sometimes you can make a square that in like three to four moves it can get to a square that you want it to. Sometimes you have to just kind of provoke a weakness for that to happen. But if your goal is to get a knight to g5, you can accomplish that in three moves. So a plan sometimes may take a little bit of time, but you can get there. Especially this is a semi-closed uh, uh, game. Why it's kind of a semi-closed is these two squares yeah semi-closed is uh, like if Shaq tried to push here you could just take there and then and then at this point if he tries to like I don't know let's see what what could the knight do maybe maybe the pawn comes up and then reroute in something like that I don't know. Let's take a look to see if that actually gives uh, no. So we were right so far. Ooh, so that was an error. So let's get rid of the uh, of the g5 and bring the queen in. There we go. And now the knight can actually come in here. And then if the queen takes, you just snap. You can actually snap this pawn off here. And then snap that. Ooh, that's not good. You don't want that. Now that I think about it, no, don't do that. Very bad. Very bad. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, your knight's posi perfectly positioned there. I should remember. Don't get greedy. Don't get greedy. That's not worth. Uh, you know, let the king move there. You're up a whole pawn in this scenario positionally. Don't get greedy. I have to remember that. Okay, we'll turn off the engine. So now he can't move his knight now because uh, Shaq would get a uh, um, the f7 pawn with an attack. So the rook slides up now. Now Shaq can actually move because this doesn't work. The rook guards the square. Oh, so, oh, wow, nice job, ding. You gotta love that. that that's a pretty active, but slightly overextended rook, in my opinion. Slightly. Ooh, yeah. That is interesting. So here... 
here, there, and I think you can just drop in there, and then see you later. I think in this scenario, rather than the rook moving, um, like what you're saying is 100% right. If he plays here, that uh, Shaq would have actually won a uh, pawn. Because, uh, actually, I think it might have been equal at, see, at this point. No white would have won a pawn. So it says to play here, and then probably... Uh, takes at that point and then queen takes and if he takes here I think it's it's actually better for uh, black in this scenario even though he has three pawn islands he's got um, there's there's actually these th these two pawn islands are protected pawns uh, two island two of the pawn uh, two out of three pawn islands are protected islands are I don't think I'm seeing that right but and so that's that's why slightly better for ding in that scenario yeah and who who to thunk that you know in this scenario if something like this happened you know this and then he plays there and then now you got you have a double attack and that's gonna f actually whoa that's bad my bad yeah let's get rid of that um, uh, let's get rid of that uh, he'll probably have to play something like that and then you take there and something like that and then mm, potentially you could double up your rooks and and get a file like that so just always be on guard for for that yeah yeah that's why you just gotta be you have to be really careful when you overextend your rook because you could get this dropped on you like what Shaq dropped on Ding. A knight shoved right into the center of your of the position he took and queen takes. Can he actually take here and then when the queen moves then take? Does that change anything? Oh, snikes, so that that's power. And then you take there. Okay, I see now the small difference is the structure of the end of the end game. Uh, all the pawns are the same. I think. Let me see. Let's see. Two, four, six. Nope. He's a pawn down and has double isolated. Oh, yikes! This is not a fun position you want to find yourself in. So he took there, and then and then the queen took. That's the reason. So now we got to see why that wasn't the best. So bishop c6. Um, rook uh, c1 now. Shaq's getting ready to drop something like maybe a discovery on the bishop with the rook. So good move by Ding. I, I really actually like that move. That's really a strong move because if this is played, you could actually take and he can't take back because of this. So, very strong move. So F, F3, that, I do not prefer that. I understand why he did, did that. Kind of support this, but look what you just, you opened up. That's now a gaping hole. Ding can drop a knight right in. If he can get a pawn here, if he can get this pawn here, and a knight there. Can you imagine the superior power that he would have if a knight was here? Man, that would wreck havoc in the king's position. So D uh, D8. Now that's under fire. So if this knight ever moves, let's say the knight moves here. Oh, surprise, surprise! But actually, you can't do that yet because of this bishop here. So you'd have to do something like retreat it back and then. If he tries here, then then that would work. 
but so king f2 nice nice the computer like that move I we talked about that yesterday you want to uh, push your candidate uh, pawn if you're trying to make a pass pawn the pawn that doesn't, let's say you have a majority of one versus two like a Ding has here. The Maurice actually said that the candidate pawn is the pawn that doesn't have anything that would be, like if there was two pawns here, like let's say two pawns here, this wouldn't be considered a candidate pawn if there was a white pawn here. But because there's no pawn here and it's two versus one and this is considered a candidate pawn. The chance of this one becoming a pass pawn, if you played here and here, and then that one played, it takes this pawn right here on the B uh, file would end up becoming a passer. That's why they call it a candidate pawn, because the file of the pawn would be a candidate. Yeah. Well, I'm, I was just showing you what I learned uh, from. Um, uh, Maurice Ashley. That's really interesting too because one thing that you have to also right alongside with this that I was thinking is uh, play is really uh, good. You know how people play like five minute games. They're great and everything but you have to remember that uh, you have to like Simon Williams uh, talked and the Grand Masters that have said, even Pontefini in uh, Searching for Bobby Fischer said that uh, uh, you have to be careful when you play those really fast games because they start teaching you uh, bad habits. That's what um, <clears throat> he said, that they uh, you start being more reflex, uh, reflex instead of actually strategy, tactics, and those type of things. You have to be very careful because it, it just teaches you bad habits because you might be in a game that's a 60 minute and a 30 minute added on increment and you can't win on time so you can't make mistakes in those games and think that you can uh, flag your opponent you just got to be very careful just be very careful with, with, uh, that you don't get tied into that okay G4 was played so now And now, see how Ding is, uh, he's slowly maneuvering. He knows his king's safe. There's no infiltration. There's enough uh, protection that even if he had to, he can lock down the structure with uh, g4 if need be. So you just have to be really careful. Knight takes. Was a4 a good move? Oh, a4. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um. I don't think so because he can just push onward. And then Ding has accomplished what his goal was to begin with. With, uh, oh, instead of g4. Yeah, I really, I don't know, because we have to, th have to think about this. Um, a lot of the grandmasters, Maurice Dash, I know I'm calling out names and saying that, but in their, in their tournaments, the U.S. Open from last year that's going to be coming, uh, coming to St. Louis in about two weeks, maybe less, I, they're going to have the U.S. Open again tournament, uh, or U.S. Championship tournament, sorry. Uh, and so what they're going to do is, uh, he talked last year, because I, I watched some of that, because I, I enjoy, you know, going through all those, watching that, uh, that you have to be careful when you play on the side of that you're weak on. You don't want to push pawns on the side that you're weak. Oh. That's true, yeah. That is true, but uh, also we have to go back to remember. Remember, principles. Principles are huge in uh, in chess. 
Like what we were like, what well, what we were just going over is yeah. Oh, thanks of a yeah, we'll do that. But remember though. Oh, he takes. What happens if he doesn't take? Okay, so it is taking. Okay. Well, see, he still gets a passer, I guess, in that scenario. So takes and then takes and then knight takes and see, Ding's got. Oh, okay, that makes that makes sense now. So Ding's got to pass. He's up a whole pawn at that point. Yeah, he's up a whole entire pawn. So, yeah, that makes more sense now why a5 wasn't played. Yeah. Hey, I even learned something there, but you just always, you got to just be careful about pushing on the side that you're weak. That's just what I was taught by my teacher, uh, what I listened to videos on YouTube, on his tapes that I have, some of his tapes, Morris Ashley's tapes. And he just says, be very careful when you push on the side you're weak. Okay, and that's why Shaq just pushed. And he also wants to kind of put some pressure on uh, Ding. He wants to get, see, this is his majority on the queen side here. Well, actually, it's not. That's kind of weird, but it's it's like it's it is a majority, but it's uh, kind of like a mezzo king queen majority kind of thing here. It's kind of weird how the pawns are structured. Because in theory, um, Shaq doesn't have um, yeah, Shaq doesn't really have a majority on the king side. I apologize on the king side. Because he has equal pawns, but he does have a kind of odd majority. Like a, it, it involves the entire king side and one of the queen side pawns. So I don't know what to call, like when you have something like this. I guess it's considered a majority, but I'm not sure what to call it. So, so we'll just say he has a majority on here versus here because it's not really the true king side it's a king side with a one pawn involvement on the queen side as well so I'm sure it has a name but I, I'm not sure what it is a4 that that's a beautiful move that is a really really beautiful move I I really enjoy that because um, the pro there is one sitch though if he does get a pass pawn on the H square, potential drawing chances for um, Shaq. So he just got to be careful. I believe that the drawing squares are these squares. If you get pawns there, you have to be very careful. I have to go over um, Jeremy Silman's Endgame book. He has a section on which files are actually draws for pawns. Certain uh, files that you have pawns on potentially have the um, the ability of being a draw. So you just have to be very careful which pawns you uh, that end up becoming past pawns on what files. They, they might, uh, it might end up becoming a draw like 20 moves down the road. So it may look like a good deal at the time, but in the end, you severely wish that you hadn't have traded. So knight to d7 was played. Bishop d3 uh, by Shaq, and he's putting pressure on this pawn. And knight takes, takes, and uh, b4. Now these pawns will end up becoming a... Uh, one of these will become a queen. Man, it's not fun when you when you have these things shoved against you. Can you imagine uh, this? You know, one linebacker versus two. That's like, whoa! I'm gonna totally get smashed. So, so <laughs> you don't want that to happen. So G5. So Shaq's trying with all his might to. Um, uh, kind of get some counterplay 
yeah, e5 was actually a really good move here because this allows for the potential uh, f pawn to be pushed. So that if something like this, you uh, you have some. If he takes here, now Shaq has a, a majority on the on the king side to march up the board as well. And this one pawn stunts these two uh, pawns, which keeps them on opposite colors. That is true. I could see perpetual as an idea. He wants to kind of, you know, potentially get a rook uh, here and maybe after the king moves, get a battery going on here, something like that. Ish takes. Oh, queen takes. Okay. Well, then he still could do a, a potential battery with the queen back here and the rook slides over. So you still have the potential to do that. Probably this is more of a forcing. It also allows for the rook maybe to come here. And even if there is an exchange, you have a bishop versus rook. And maybe, maybe it's drawish if he can get enough of the pawns off the board. So... So now, now we have to be careful that uh, there's nothing that could arise. And he brings the queen in, which is interesting. He's thinking about doubling here and then sacking his bishop to open this up for mate. So you always got to be eerie on that. Yeah, the queen, yeah. And too late, too late. Ding's going for it. And rather than taking, because uh, the bishop could take at that point and see you later, uh, rook. So um, he took and then he pushes onward. And there's really not... Now the rook can get in behind this pass pawn, and there's really no way to stop it from queening. Now this uh, queen is free to uh, take this pawn. That is pretty puzzling why Shaq didn't play that pawn there, because he ha his best opportunity is trying to get something going here. He's still losing, but queen, yeah. When that queen happened, I was like, it's over. Because there's not, there's not enough he, he could take, but. So that was the, that was an inaccurate move. He should have taken with his, um, I believe that potentially oh wow there's a pin there oh that hurts ouch that that's just painful you know you're just so close to mate it's like that's mate right there man that's like mate it's like really oh that hurts Well, maybe there's a check here. I think that's, I think that's, um, check. Well, you can't take because that's mate. If you take here, see you later, checkmate. So you can't take. So he's kind of got to get, he potentially could play there, and then if you take here, takes, and then now there's pawn advantage, so, you, so you'd have to take at this point here, and then the bishop, the queen would have to take, and, and then you take here, and uh, yeah, it's, boy, that's a mess. 
Better than what was played, though. And he resigned. I really don't see any... At this point, I was like, wow. So tempting. So close. So... The, let's see what the engine says to play. Let's say it's over. So it's... What does it actually want? Up or over? You have a game? Okay. And it takes. Yeah, there's really no way to stop the... You potentially have that of an idea. Yeah, okay. Oh, 2016, huh? That's true. Let's pull up another one. Kadoki. Hmm. Okay, we got it. Uh oh, darn it. What happened? Uh oh, I must have, uh, drat. I'll move that. Oops, I don't want that. There we go. There we go. Okay, so. Alright, so we'll do what white played here. So the Chikorian variation. Chikorian variation. This really doesn't work because of, uh, so he, that's why, uh, that's why the only move you could play is, uh, G4 at that point. He provoked a weakness, so C5, and then now there's a pawn push, and in comes the forces. You notice how how the grand supers grandmasters notice um, these slight slight moves, like inaccuracies in the position. There's a reason for that, because they study games and uh, they get prepared mega time, and that's the one thing we gotta start getting back into game study training. I agree. Yeah. And that that's that's why I want to uh that's why I want to start doing that. I'm going to try to pull get some games that we can go over like a game one game a night or something like that. I'll try to find some really good ones. Or you guys can bring a game that, you know, you guys want to go over and then we'll talk through it cuz that's the way to learn. Uh that's what uh, Fabi, they even asked uh, Fabi at the celebration um, conference thing 
um, what did he do to prepare basically for um, you know the candidates? He play. He said that he studied uh, chess games from and and learned lines of thought. And he they asked him what type of games. He says, "Do you do you study?" I think it was um, Pillsbury. He says, "I I don't I don't." He said, "I think it was Pillsbury that that he says I do I did some of his games, but I did more Morphe and Tall and those type of players." I hope I'm saying it right, but I listened to it on YouTube. His uh, one of his interviews that some of the um, people got to ask him when he was up with the two uh, people, the lady on one side and the gentleman on the other. And so that's uh, that's what he said. So and that got me thinking, like, you know what? That's right. We need to start getting into games. You know what? If it if it worked for Fabi and he he's now a world champion, there's something to that. So I was like, you know what? Let's start doing that. And so that's that's what that's what went through my mind, and it kind of persuaded me when I was listening to that. So let's see here. Okay, so we play bishop there. D three, bishop D three. Okay, so that if he trades. It's kind of really odd that you would give up your good bishop, but it may it makes uh, kind of principal sense if you think about it. This queen now dominates this more active. Let me see b5. Yeah, it is very annoying. Yeah, I guess that you could do that line. It, it would be kind of, but see, they're in a closed position anyway, so um, they, they there really is no imbalance at this point. Even if there was a trade, there's actually, I guess, one imbalance if you think about it, which is um, more uh, Java. I'm, I think his name are well, let's call him Job, J O B, so I can pronounce it. Uh, job uh, as white um, he has one thing over that his opponent it's equal very equal position yeah yeah exactly because this queen has really good scope this knight has good scope and so it kind of makes up for the I, I suppose you can go bishop to e uh, e2 yeah Right here, yeah, I see what you're saying. Then, then, uh, and then queen d2, and then bishop d1, and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Then you, then you can go there and un undevelop your knight. Yeah, yeah, you, in that scenario, at this moment, the light square bishop is um, a bad bishop. So, in theory, Getting rid of it allows for a le uh, the cramped position to be removed because uh, Shaq actually has job in uh, a cramped position because potentially next he could actually push. And then if takes, knight takes. And if you like a closed position maybe he could uh, play a uh, a5 and hold this knight maybe something like that I suppose that could have been an idea but rather than that he takes because activity and then he gets to move his knight this is a closed game and Jeremy Stillman calls it a, sta a static position which means slow there's dynamic which if this if these squares were open and we'll just we'll just open all this. We'll just have all this be open here. If this was if this all was open, all this room here, this would be considered a uh, dynamic game. But because the structure is like this, it's closed, which is stagnant or static. Sorry, not stagnant. Static. Uh, I have to say the terminology correct. Okay, so knight e2. So now, now Job is getting uh, his 
pieces out. Still a little cramped though, so it's not like he's out of the woods without you know any uh, problem. <clears throat> Boy, this knight is a pain in the neck. And you wouldn't want to, even though it's tempting, you wouldn't want to do this. Because then you get you have something like that, and you can't take here, because if you did, you guess you do win a pawn, but at what cost, though? Yeah, I mean, this, this pawn's going to fall even if you played here. You know, I, guess, I guess you could win a pawn. Probably Shaq's idea was to maybe hammer here, castle. Bring a rook out and start, you know, causing some damage. So, you know, potentially, maybe. And that's why this pawn was protected to begin with. Was that's why knight uh, d7 was played to protect this idea here of. And then if he comes up, he can just take there. And now, see each other. Um, we have to remember, <clears throat> excuse me, that grandmasters have multitude ideas. They look into the future to see potential sacrifices, potential setups, all these different type of um, maneuvers. He saw that he saw our idea back here. If let me see what 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 we have what, what did we have played? Let me see, not there. If bishop was played here right away, and he took, and then took, and then came up. Well, no, I guess he already moved there, didn't he? What did I? What did we have? Oh, I got it. I mean, I, for, I forgot that he could take. That was right. Okay, but you you got you guys got the idea that you have to. They they all have ideas about their moves aren't just one move ideas. So A4 is a really good idea. One sec, I gotta get a drink of water. My throat's a little dry. I don't know, better. Uh, sometimes if I talk too long, I get dry throat. <clears throat> so that's why I kind of drink some water. Let's see here. Yeah, this is really good. He's locking down his knight, which that's my teacher told me is the correct um, way of doing it. You want to lock your knight into a good outpost. And at this moment, the knight really can't come back because it's not good. Let's just say, and if it tries to come here, you give it, he gets a surprise of a knight to uh, c7. And the rook's trapped. So, so um, Shaq really can't move his uh, a6 knight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so the bishop comes, and now it's eyeing the rook and the pawn. And so now, that's really odd that he played there. That does make sense um, for the bishop to do that. And king f1, bishop e, and then so now you're trading, you got the king kind of to move, and so then you trade and then g3, h, and then knight. So maybe maybe this the, maybe that move wasn't the best because it allowed um, Job to get his knight maybe to a slightly better. Well, actually, that is a cramped spot, isn't it? Because really, there's no points. Uh, and if he plays there, he gets he comes here, he gets forked. So he'd have to come there. That costs like three moves just uh, to have any activity for that um, knight. So yeah, maybe that is maybe that was worth it. Now that we think about it, yeah. And then see how they uh, they just crack the position open. It's like they just break it open. It's it's like ouch. And 
<clears throat> very bad idea to take because then you get crushed with uh, with this move here. So you don't want to take whatever you do. So the only move that does anything is to push. But then you allow this pass pawn to be a thorn in your neck for the rest of the game. It's like, really? It's just a pain in the drain. So knight takes. I mean, not knight. Pawn takes. <clears throat> then bishop takes. Now the pawn pushes with check. And so you got to be careful now. If the king moves in front, he uh, if he moves here you have a problem with a check potential. And if here, you might have something like this and then the knights start flooding in. Actually, probably if he did that, he'd just play here. And if he takes, then you get a surprise of a whop. See you, queen. So, <clears throat> so that's why uh, um, Shaq actually moved to g7 was so that if the check which uh, was played this is a mistake because you have here and here and you have there so if this takes you actually get um, I believe he has one move that he can come up to and that's mate so that's why that was a that's why that move was an error and he should have brought the bishop which <clears throat> was better. So. And even, even, um, Job made a mistake, so. It's kind of hard in, when you're going over the board to do this. Come on, reconnect on me, come on. Hold on, let me. One sec, guys. What the? For some reason this hold on guys I apologize this is okay okay weird okay sorry about that whoa I don't want that nope get out of there hold on <clears throat> Okay, good. I want to make sure everything's recording. Okay, still recording. All right. I'm just gonna exit on that. See if that doesn't help. Hold on, guys. I just gotta have to uh, exit out of everything. Just one sec. I'll be right back. Well, I'll get the chat up and going. Just just hang in there guys <clears throat> excuse me
me. Let's pull this up till it's time. Okay, is it, is it, is it up right now? Close. Okay. Let's give it another shot. And see, uh, see what's going on. and one of those. There we go. Okay. Let's let's pull that up. Let's get these two up and going. We'll get back to that part. Don't worry about it. It's just, you know, what you gotta do is computers. It's gotta deal with it. Just one sec, guys. Just hold on. I'll be right back. I'm gonna. I have to go check my internet. To see what's going on. One sec, guys, I have to AFK.
Hey guys, I want to tell you, I'm not, I'm not uh, abandoned yet or anything. I'm just gonna go AFK again. I have to check my internet, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, okay? So I'm gonna try. If I can't get my internet set up, I may have to stop the stream, but I think I can get it fixed. But I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes, cause I don't want to ha have you guys hanging on, okay? So I just gotta tell you, I have internet issues right now. So just, just hang on, okay? I'm sorry about this. Hey guys, sorry about that. Internet sitch. Hold on.
One sec, guys. I am sorry about this. Hold on. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a pop. I'm gonna get a pop out. Weird. I'm sorry, guys. Just hold on. I'm. I have no idea what's going on. This is the weirdest thing ever. I am so sorry. We. I'm gonna. I'll try to get this up and going. Hold on guys, one sec, I have to check again. Just one sec, I'll be right back. I gotta make sure that um, it's working here and I'll pull this up too. Just hold on.
see it's not, it's not, it's doing this right here. Look right here, bro. Brother. It says this, and I don't know what to do with this. Okay, uh, can you do that? I can't. If I do, I lose the. I lose the recording, though. Why, well, bro? I have. If I leave, it stops recording. So I, just, I guess I have to wait for 90, 95 seconds. I apologize, guys. Just hold on. I. My thing is having to reboot in 80 seconds. Reconnected. Hey, all right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Uh, I don't know what what happened there. Well, I'm back, so. Um, I am sorry about that. We need to. We'll get back into our. Uh, the area that we were at. Where was that? One second. We'll get back. Okay. I think we were right here, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Night there. Okay. Let's let's get let's get our uh, thing back here. Okay. There we go. Well. We, what we have to do is decide what was actually the, in this scenario, what what should what should happen is hold on, I'm gonna I gotta do one thing real quick. I'm gonna re uh, pull up my Twitch account and get a new uh, stream thing because it it's uh, that I think the stream thing is having a sitch. Just one second. Oops. Okay. Perfect. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Excellent. Okay. Well, we what we have to remember is F6 was a mistake. We found out that if you did this move here, you won basically a. Uh, you want a rook, so you're you're up in exchange, but Shaq would have two pawns, so it's still interesting. So and five pawns advantage, and so Shaq just kept pushing. He tried his hardest to just push onward and onward, and at that at this point, you know, it's like whoa, what are you uh, uh, what you doing? And he's he's got now. He's castle queenside, and these rooks, he's got a pass pawn, 
and if this happens you have check and if it comes in now you can actually bring your uh, I believe your queen can you actually let's see what would you do at this point I think you'd bring your queen in if I'm not mistaken let me see oh you I was wondering about that so there if he takes takes And then, oh, mate. There's your mate. So that's why he has to play knight there. Rook comes up. So if knight takes, pawn takes, queen slides back. That That's actually the proper move. So he plays there. He won the queen, so that was a sweet tactic. Takes. And he pushes. King uh, h8, which is a, a mistake. And then g takes is actually a. Um, it was an error. He should have taken here and tried to uh, potentially open up probably let me see if that's then you can take and then after takes you bring the you can bring oops sorry you bring here and if queen takes and then you probably have to bring your knight and attack here and then he comes back and you bring your rook over and then you have that it's like e okay rook takes 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 and then that's going to end up becoming uh, a queen so so that's but this just uh, sealed the fate with and there's no way to stop mate if he plays here that's mate so even if he tries here you push and you're threatening mate and then he comes there with check You could just do a, a stylish queen or a rook mate. Depends. Well, he resigned um, right here. He resigned right there. So at that point, uh, Shaq resigned. So let's start into. We'll do like one or two puzzles. One sec, I have to. I'll be right back.
Let's see, what are we going to do? F takes E4. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. For some reason, my internet cut out on me. But you know what? We Remember, we never give up and we never give in. We just keep um, pushing forward. Okay. Let's see here. Knight, okay, knight takes. see here. <clears throat> 9H2? Yep. Actually, that's mate, so if we could somehow... What? How can we take advantage of that? Let's see here. I'm thinking it has to do with G B five, pawn B five. And then what? <clears throat> excuse me. Then what we can do is, if he comes here, then we can take queen takes, rook takes, and if checks, we just intercept with our our bishop, and we should be fine. No knight knight h. Um, remember knight knight h uh, h two. The knight just takes. Oh wait a second. Knight h two. Huh. Yeah, it does unleash a pin, doesn't it? But I think he could just double up at that point. Let's see, he could just play rook to e1. Yeah, but, well, what happens? Well, let's just say that we do that and he plays rook e1. Wait, we have to, and then let's say he takes back. Queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. I don't know if we get anything for that. It's a good idea. I, I like the idea. I think that that might be the um, the b5 might be the idea because if he moves here, we take. If he moves here, we take, and queen takes. Uh, rook takes, and if rook takes, then we checkmate. Because I, I think that I think the our our problem is this rook. Yeah, you did. You gave me that. Yeah, you did. You did do that. I I yeah, I do see that. But we have to. Uh, I'm wondering if that's not the line because that does attack the rook. It pulls it off. So then the rook only has like these two squares to go to. And when they do that, yeah. <clears throat> because if it, I'll show you what happens if it doesn't. Let's say it, let's say it moves, we'll say here. First you take there, if queen takes, then you take. And the queen has to actually take here. Otherwise it ends with mate. And so that that's what happens the idea that that you talked about here 
was was really good as well but the only problem is here and then at that point when we take he takes we take and uh, we're down material that's so that's the only uh, sitch we do have a pass pawn but I don't know if we have enough compensation because he has two versus one so that was a good good uh, good idea though I, I did like that wondering if it's not knight takes knight takes queen takes check when the rook comes we play rook or do we play we play queen takes okay knight there knight there takes if he comes up here we play check he goes back we check and we should have check mate at that point what do you think Yep. Yep, gotcha. Ooh, why not just win the queen, right? Holy ravioli. Oh. Oh. Uh. Drat. This loses. Ah, we lose a whole rook. That was mine. Got a little too greedy there. I didn't. Ch I didn't check all options. I'm not gonna. I mean, we gotta do that. We gotta remember to do that. Just gotta. Gotta remember to do that. That irritates me when I. Uh, when I'm. When I make such a easy thing, like that. Let's see here. Let's get. We'll get that back. Don't worry. We'll get them back. We'll get the points back. Okay. We have this. That's potentially uh, hanging. I also have a problem here. I mean, potentially we could play knight b3. That attacks the rook. And attacks that. So if here, if rook takes, knight takes, the rook's attacked and the knight's attacked again. So this has to be the move here. This does a double-double. A because if he takes there, then we could take back, and this knight attacks this rook, and this bishop attacks the knight. So what do you think, Fox? Knight b uh, b3. Let's go for it. All right, we're up a pawn from that. We have 20 to 19, so we're up one pawn. I'm not one pawn, sorry, one point. <laughs> My mind's in the, in the zone in chess. It's like, one pawn. <laughs> That's funny. Let's see here.
trying to see if we if we don't have anything with uh, F4 but I don't know because I think he has uh, well let me see the only move he has at that point is there and then we slide our rook over so here here Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I like that. Trying to see if rook b1, rook comes up here, and then we play, um, no, then he has here. Well, no, then the bishop actually protects there, doesn't it? So he has to retreat all the way back. So if we bring rook b1, huh, rook b1, well, well, if we did rook b1 and he tries rook over here, we check with our uh, knight. And when the king moves, we snap off the bishop. Well, see, if we play here, he has that. And even if he does it like that, he could we play here, he just moves back. And then we don't really get anything at that point. This uh, the rook b1 is is actually the most forcing line. Yeah, it, I agree with you on this. I totally agree when you play here, but the problem is when we check, he doesn't have to come, you know, up up. He doesn't have to come up. He can actually slide back. So like here there and then he then we come there he moves back and he protects the rook and I don't really think I don't know if we get anything for for that I'm not sure yeah and but see look at if we play here he goes here we go c3 uh, if he goes rook to oh I see what you're saying yeah yeah Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't work out, does it? Well, we do get, we could play there and then win, uh, and then win the rook, but then, the, no, we don't win a rook at that point because the bishop takes that we taste king takes. No, I, I guess that, that is the only, I, say, I guess C, I guess C3 is the only, uh, is the only move then. Huh. Some reason I thought I had it worked out that it actually works. Well, let me see. We I guess we could play here, and then if he moves there, we move our rook to d1. Then if he moves here, then we can check. And when the king moves, we see, yeah, it does work. But it's, it, look, just watch, watch. If we play here, he moves there, right? We play here. I say the rook slides over, we check, and when the king moves, we'll say back, we snap off, we check. So here, there, 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 check, king moves back, we take the bishop. What do you think?
Did you delight that line? Let's take a looky. Because I'll show you what, what would happen if you played here, 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 here. Alright, actually, that's this is better at this point now. My bad, sorry. And then when he plays there, we take. And then when Rook takes, we take. And we're up a whole piece. There we go. Yeah, good job, guys. Hurrah. Yes, we're doing it. We're doing great. This is great. We'll do like two two more. We'll do one, this one, and then we'll do one more. Well, internet's sometimes a pain in the drain. Uh, it works, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see here. If we take, he takes. No, I don't think we get anything from that scenario. Trying to see if we could take advantage of this pin here. Oh, you want to see why that work? doesn't work? Okay. Not a problem. Okay, dokie. I think it's because he can move. Uh, oh, he moves. Yeah. So he can't he can't play there. So the king has to move, and there's really no real way to. Uh... You kind of have a perpetual at this point. Yeah. Are you good with that? Are you? Do you have any more questions before I move on? Is everybody good with uh, any other questions? Okay. Yeah, I see it. One second. So, you're wondering, uh, you're wondering what was the idea of what? What's the idea of c3 to block the bishop defense? Okay. All I know is that it uh, it's more it attacks the bishop. I think it just <clears throat> it's just a more forcing line. So it just wins a piece. And otherwise, if the rook moves, like what you're saying, a fork would happen. But now, now we need to take advantage of this here. See if we can't take advantage of this pin. So it is the right idea? So knight takes, bishop takes. I see what you're saying, uh, horse. But. But I think we have to move potentially there first. It's either here 
see that if you place there or here here there 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 and we fork the bishop the queen and the rook We take with the knight. You don't take with the rook, you take with the knight. Let's see, I'm trying to see if here, here, there, check. Let's say he moves over, actually he's only got, we have a check there and I think that's, you have to move back there and then we do a discovery on him. I'm wondering if it's not knight takes right away, bishop takes, well, no, if we do that, then, well, then we do have, we do have, uh, knight there, don't we? No, I don't think we do. I think this has to be played right away. No, we can't do that because if the bishop takes, we try to move. Yeah, that hangs. Arr, arr. Irritating. That's just, that's just puzzling. What are we missing here? But I don't think I don't think he'll I don't think he has to take though. He just like what you're saying, like the idea. No, no, your 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 idea of the rook to f8 was 100% right. That's the way that he holds everything. There's no way after that that we win anything. So I'm wondering if we. Drat, this is a uh, puzzling sitch, isn't it? Very puzzling.
What does uh, what does uh, pawn c3 do? I was just wondering, cause it, it just you have to, cause I'm not sure what pawn c3 does. I don't know, cause he has at that point. If we go pawn c3, rook slides over. I guess we could play that, but I don't know if we have anything with that scenario. But I think it's too. It might be too slow. Oh, C four. Yeah, I'm not. I'm always, you're you're fine. I was just wondering because I I'm always interested because this is a um really puzzling. Opens up for the bishop. Yeah, but the bishop's actually trapped at this moment between these uh, the knight and the queen. So um, d4 probably is what you probably meant. C c4 because otherwise, if he does go d4, there's no scope for the bishop to be opened up to. Let's see here. Ah, man, I just... Hmm. I, I thought you meant d4. I knew when you said that to open up for the bishop that you meant uh, d4. Yeah. Uh, uh, there we go. So not to worry, not to worry, not to worry. Um... Let's see what uh, knight, knight takes, bishop takes, takes, queen takes. And we don't have any um, this covered, that's covered, so this knight really can't move. Pressure on, yes. So it puts. So you're saying it puts pressure on the rook. Uh, C six. I mean, on, on the knight, I got you. I just don't know if we. I don't know if there's enough time though. I'm trying because if if we play here, he plays here. We play there, he plays here, and I don't think we have accomplished enough for the two moves that we've. Uh, I don't really know if we accomplished enough. It's all about um, tactics. Ninety two. Okay, pawn takes D two. Ah, shit, Bishop. 
Yeah, if we played here, he plays there. We play here, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. And I don't know if we've accomplished enough. Knight d2, but knight, don't we lose a knight if we go knight d2? Doesn't he just take if we uh, go knight d2? So here, he takes there, takes, 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 okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then you can bring the knight in there, okay. Yeah, give it a shot. It makes sense now, because if he um, brings his rook over here, we just bring, we can, oh, you snap off with, okay, snap there, 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 and then you bring that, you bring that down, okay, that makes sense, all right, one more, one more, guys, good job, good find there. <clears throat> ben, a good find there, Ben. Yeah, that was a tough one. You did great there. Oh, wow. You gotta be kidding me. It can't be that easy. Wait a second. My bad. Here. We take, rook takes bishop. Check. Rook takes rook. And then you play, uh... Yeah. We'll do one more. Cause it, <clears throat> one more. And this, this will be the last, because we'll just do three.
Mm -mm. No, we still have uh, Rook here. Hmm. Mm. I wonder if we could trap the queen. Maybe it's a queen trap. That does, that does, that is interesting, isn't it? So knight takes bishop. What could he play at that point? He could try queen, uh, queen g8, attacking our knight, attacking here. I think if we take here, he goes queen g8. I think he has queen g8 anyways. We take here, we have queen. I could play queen e6 at that point. But I don't know if that does anything after he plays here. If we take here. I don't know. I am so something sitchy. D1, queen takes check. And then if we try to, to block with um, the rook, he plays queen to uh, D5, threatening check, and then potentially uh, checkmate. So...
I see it now. I see the mate. You take here first. He plays here. You play uh, queen to h6, threatening mate. The, the, it is this. Boom. Okay, we'll uh, we'll end on that. That was a really uh, eh, that was really good move. Good. That was really fun. Three points. That's kind of odd. I think that was more than a two thousand. That's just my opinion, though. What do you think? Do you have any questions, guys? See, if he takes here, then you get mate. So this this allows you to um, indirectly uh, save the fork the the two rooks. And the, the bishop comes in there. And then when he comes there. He can't take. And then the queen just comes sliding in and if it takes there. It's just it's all over but the crying. Yeah. And then you double up there. You check. You can even check here. I'd probably check there. Just get a little, give him a little bit, and uh, then takes, 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 and you're still winning. So me? No, 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 no. I'm not better than Magnus. Trust me. I'm just using the gift that the Lord uh, has given me, you know. And do you know what? It's it's not it's not easy to get up get this far. Is my last line losing? Oh, we'll check. Hey, you know what? Not a problem. You know what? Let's take a look. Okay, but just remember that you know what? We all have the potential to be great in chess. It's just time, time with the material. And putting aside, sometimes you have to put aside your wants of like playing. I'm just, I just gonna give you a quick little thing while we're doing this. So your line was knight, queen g, and then bishop e6. Uh, you had to put aside your wants. And there we go. There. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're thinking after that. G. Okay, f. And I. And then you're saying queen. Queen takes g7. Queen. You just gotta sometimes put aside your wants of wanting, you know, like when you want to play those blitz games, those five minute games, sometimes you gotta put aside that. Um, oh, so rook e, alright, rook e1, gotcha. Check. Alright, then the bishop intercepts. Okay, then the queen, um, let me see, what's the other one? Okay, um, oh, you, oh, you want to, oh, you want to move the king, okay. King D, gotcha, sorry, king D8, my bad there. I'm, I'm, I'm following along, just, just give me a sec, we'll get this. Not to worry. Uh, okay, king D8, okay, D, okay, then we have queen H, H check, king C2, and then rook c1. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's better for. Yeah, it's better for. Um, for black at this point. You're right. It's better for black. Yeah. So you're you're still fine. Yeah. It's just think about this. If you have if you have a little amount of time, this line does work, Fox. It does work. It's just that you have to uh, you 
Yeah, you did great. You know what? I got to tell you, you guys got to just, you know what? Just keep keep pushing forward. That's that's the whole thing, becoming a great chess player. It's not giving up. And it's sometimes you just got to, like, the, the players, um, like Karawana, so you have to sometimes study a long time to get good. So that's just one thing. Okay. The, all right, guys, with that, I do have to log. I appreciate that you all came on and, uh, you know, talked and helped out. We're getting better. You know what? Little things in life, don't let them bother you. Keep moving forward. Remember, the hardest thing to do is put aside what you want to do to get better in a certain field that you're at. You know what I mean? That's just one thing you have to do. And remember, always, always um, just keep moving forward. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from games and just learn. That's that's the thing. And uh, I like to meet the Robinsons uh, phrase, keep moving forward. And as well, remember that uh, there's always a plan to position. You just have to find it. And then when you do, you get to say, I love it when a plan comes together. And as always, guys, remember what Wesley So says. Serve the Lord Jesus. And as I say, God bless. And I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a great rest of the night or morning. And be blessed. I'll be on tomorrow. Bye-bye, guys.